Hi class, this is Miss Maples. I just wanted to record this video working through the tip fast for theme for English B, especially if you are struggling with this poem or if you just need a little bit more help with tip fast. I'm going to start by helping you analyze the title because you do that before you even read the poem. So write out theme for English B on your tip fast sheet and then mark the connotation of each of those words. Theme means essay. It's just a describing word, right? Isn't that neutral for that doesn't have any kind of emotion? English, again, it's just a descriptor. Theme for English B. It's a very neutral title. There's no strong emotion. It's not really giving away the emotion that is going to be set forth in this. And then write your prediction about what the poem's going to be about. You already kind of know since I described it. So I think it will be basically an essay for his college English class, but written as a poem. Because remember that this poem is um, by Langston Hughes and the speaker is in his early 20s and he is a college student at Columbia University and he's writing this poem as a response to his teacher saying, go home and write a page tonight and let that page come out of you and then it will be true. And this is his response. So I'm going to read it and walk you through. Theme for English B by Langston Hughes. The instructor said, go home and write a page tonight and let that page come out of you. Then it will be true. I wonder if it's that simple. I am 22 colored, born in Winston-Salem. I went to school there, then Durham, then here, to this college on the hill above Harlem. I am the only colored student in my class. The steps from the hill lead down into Harlem, through a park, then I cross St. Nicholas, 8th Avenue, 7th, and I come to the Y, the Harlem Branch Y, where I take the elevator up to my room, sit down, and write this page. So, so far, he's telling you the prompt, what his teacher asked him to write. Then he's thinking about the prompt. Is it going to be easy for me to just have this trueness come pouring out of me? And then he describes going home. The why is the train that he's taking home all the way back to Harlem, right? Um, which is known as an African-American part of New York. Um, so it's kind of already describing who he is. And here he is writing the page. It's not easy to know what is true for you or me at 22, my age, but I guess I'm what I feel and see and hear. Harlem, I hear you, hear you, hear me. We too, you, me talk on this page. I hear New York too. Me? Who? Well, I like to eat, sleep, drink, and be in love. I like to work, read, learn, and understand life. I like a pipe for a Christmas present or records, Bessie, Bop, or Bach. I guess being colored doesn't make me not like the same things other folks like who are other races. So will my page be colored that I write? Being me, it will not be white. But it will be a part of you, instructor. You are white, yet a part of me, as I am a part of you. That's American. Sometimes perhaps you don't want to be a part of me. Nor do I often want to be a part of you. Sorry, I, there we go. But we are, that's true. As I learn from you, I guess you learn from me, although you're older and white and somewhat more free. This is my page for English B. Okay, so now that you have read it, you're ready to write just a very simple paraphrase. Okay, so something like this poem is about a young man in college writing to his white professor. He considers his own identity as an African American and also the identity of his 
older white professor. He also compares how they relate to one another. So that's mine. And you're probably like, whoa, that's a lot for a first read. Um, but I'm an English teacher, so I'm going to be able to go a little bit deeper. Whatever your paraphrase would be is fine. If all you wrote is there was a guy who went home on the train and he wrote to his teacher and wrote about stuff he liked and wrote about how his teacher was older and white and somewhere somewhat more free, that would be fine too. Just your first interaction with the poem. Okay, now we get into analysis. So for diction, what you wanna do is go back to the poem, pick out five to 10 important words, write them down and mark their connotation. So let's see. I don't know, Harlem stands out to me. A neighborhood in New York seems important. Let's see. He likes to be in love. Colored. That seems like an important thing in this. The fact that he's not white and how that affects him. American seems important to me in this. Now you might not pick the same words and that is totally okay. Free seems important. So whatever words you pick are fine. Just pick out words that seem like a, have a little bit more weight in the poem. And you're gonna put them here. What were my others? Harlem. colored, and you can do five to 10. And then I want you to try to mark the connotation of those words. Um, free would be positive. Although the way that he uses it, he says that his professor is somewhat more free. So although free is positive, I think that the way he's using it right there might be negative. So I'm going to write positive word that used negatively for free. If you don't have freedom, that's bad. That's why you have to look at the word in context, right? You guys are probably seeing there's not like, this isn't like math where there's like one right answer. This is about walking through analysis. American, I think that he uses that in a positive way. How it's American to be part of one another. Harlem, I think probably positive and love. Harlem's where he lives and he seems like he has a connection to it. Maybe neutral. You guys can see, I don't have like a nice clear cut answer for all these. I would say colored, the way he's using it is neutral. It's just a description of who he is. He's not saying it's necessarily negative or positive. And then overall, I would say that his um, writing style and his diction is kind of formal, but it's more like, it's kind of casual too. So I'm going to say he uses, he doesn't use slang, but the words and feeling are casual. Okay, imagery. So then go back to the poem. Is there anything he says that has a really strong image, right? And you're gonna write that down. Um, I, to me, there's like the Cullen poem we just read, Any Human to Another has stronger image. His is just more simply like descript, describing things. Maybe his description of heading home. If I was gonna pick anything, I would probably pick this because it's pretty descriptive of like the path he takes and I can imagine it. So that might work. And then I'm just going to write a little note, not super strong imagery. 
but still a nice clear description. And you guys can do this when you tip fast. So I'm going to be looking at overall, like how well did you understand the poem? So don't feel like you have to like, oh, is this imagery? Is this not like just write, like put down what you think and then tell me why you think it, why you think it is actually the most important part. Okay. Are there any metaphors? Anytime where he uses something, he's making a uh, direct comparison between two things. I feel like he's kind of saying, so will my page be colored that I write? I think that could be um, a metaphor because the page isn't colored. He means that is it going to be different from his professor because the speaker is black, whereas the professor is a white man. So to that. Simile, any like, as, or than comparisons. He said that he's not big on the figurative language. Like with Colin, we were found all this figurative language, but he's more just kind of describing things, right? Um, I don't see one. Nope. Any personification, anytime he's giving something um, that is not living, like living characteristics. Um, I'd say this is kind of personification. By like saying, addressing Harlem and addressing New York as if they're people, I think that could work as personification. And I'm not doing it, but you guys are going to want to include the line numbers. I know that it changes the numbering. So just go back and make sure you put the line numbers um, when you are going through and doing it. So I can rem see what it is you're quoting. Are there any symbols? Are there any things that stand for something? Um, you guys see that I don't just have like a nice, clear answer for these things. The only thing I was thinking as I looked through this is his records are kind of symbolic of like who he is. So if you read Bessie Bob or Bach and you're like, I have no clue what he's talking about, go look it up. Bessie Smith is a famous like blues singer. Um, Bop was a style of music. Bach is classical. So I'm going to say that the records are symbolic of how diverse he is and his interests are. He doesn't just like one thing. Okay, I'm not going to walk you through the rest, you guys, but I hope you're starting to get how to do this. Remember that if you get to like irony and you're like, I don't remember what irony is, Go back and look at the notes. They're linked right here. You can just pull them up. Go back and read what irony is. You can also ask me if you're stuck on something. Ask me in chat, right? If you're at home, write me an email. So use all of your resources. I really want you guys to learn to be good learners, like how to work through something that's difficult and do your best work. I am not looking for perfection with these tip fasts. I'm looking to see your thought. I'm looking to see that you bothered to look up the term, you tried to find it, and you're working through the learning process. If you're doing that, you're good, okay? So please work through and finish this tip fast on your own. Hopefully that was somewhat helpful. Um, and let me know how I can help you.